When I grew up, ceramic was very precious and it was hard to get and it got shipped off to West Germany. So the potters actually in the GDR, they had their studios only one day open and that was like maybe on a Monday at 6 p.m. and people would stand in line for 24 hours to try to buy the thirds and the fourths. I don't even know what the quality control is called because the first and the seconds went over as trading goods to get other stuff. So my mother had like a precious ceramic collection. So I grew up in a household where like there were vases around me that were bigger than myself. And at one point when I was four, I tripped over a big vase from my mom and she was ready to kill me. So my dad had to hold me up. And I think at this point I was cursed to be a potter because I broke her precious piece of object. And so from ever then, I just had like that longing to be a clay artist. Yeah, so my, when I came to the States, my aesthetic was totally pop art, like funk art, pop art. That was all I could think about. That was all what interested me. And monochrome and non-shiny was never what I would choose to do. But then when I um, went to Long Beach, someone had left me the brown clay body and I used it at a demo clay during class. And then I just got bored demoing cups and I started making this figure and I fired it in an electric kiln. And when I looked at the piece after it was fired, it looked like made out of stone, but it had like throwing lines on it. And the cold shivers ran down my back. It, was, it just felt so strong. And that's when I gave away all my B-mix and English porcelain. And I went to the store and I got 20 boxes of that Jamaican clay body. <laughs>